One more time, thank you to all attendees and uh, a special thanks uh, to Dami. Dami, um, uh, the floor is all yours. Feel free to share your screen, introduce yourself, and start with the presentation. Thank you. One more time, do you see my screen? Can yes, you I can confirm? see it. Nice. So welcome to Advanced Data Types, Jason, for this time. So in short words, who am I? Who am I? I was for many years a developer, mostly using ISP.NET and C Sharp, but also many other technologies, also Clarion, Oracle, Forms, and et cetera. And I started to use SQL Server from 2000, and I have more than 15 years of professional experience, and I actually oriented myself in SQL Server development and optimization. I am working for a company named Span or Span, whatever you like. I am uh, leading Croatian SQL Server user group meetings. Uh, also in 2019, I start to organize SQL Saturdays events in Croatia. Uh, so this year we will have Data Saturday and uh, we plan to have it live. And after almost two years, I think it will be a great thing to see each other in person. I'm also a co-founder of uh, Data Weekender Conference, and I have a blog about SQL Server. And uh, for the second time in a row, I am uh, awarded with uh, MVP status for my contribution in the community. And of course, I speak to various conferences and events. So what we will speak today about. So first, we will say a few words about JSON and compare it maybe to XML or something that maybe you already know from the side of SQL. Uh, then we will see how to convert SQL uh, data sets in JSON format, also how to read. JSON data in SQL, and also how to modify JSON document. And finally, we will show some two or three tips and tricks and nice things about JSON. So you probably know this, but uh, let's start from the beginning. What is JSON actually? It is a notation for uh, JavaScript object notation. It is a language independent open standard format for data exchange between applications and services. Uh, you can also store data in JSON format and uh, the format of a JSON document is very simple, very popular, uh, and it is commonly used, for example, in Ajax applications, web services, uh, no SQL databases, so in simple words, JSON objects are human readable lists of key value pairs. Okay, uh, JSON uh, supports only three basic data types. So strings, numbers, Boolean values, and plus the null uh, value, of course, for representing null values. All other data types should be casted in one of these. And for example, you don't have a special date time data type. So for example, dates and times are represented and processed as strings, of course. Uh, JSON string is a sequence of Unicode characters surrounded by double quotation marks. And all the special characters must be escaped. And here you can see the escape keeping rules for special characters in JSON. Uh, okay, here is an example of uh, representation, the same customer record in both JSON XML format and also on the, on the bottom of the screen, you can see the result, table result from SQL Server Management Studio of the same record. 
So here seems that uh, XML is bigger, as you can see, JSON is simpler and is uh, smaller than XML. But uh, let's compare this in deep. So compared to XML, JSON format is less verbose and it's easier to read. JSON objects usually contain less data than XML objects and it is more adequate for network transfers because of course less data means faster transfers. JSON, JSON format contains uh, less text than the XML format and data in JSON format are represented by ar arrays and objects while XML is a tree structure. XML can store a more complex data type of course and it's more robust than JSON. And uh, one advantage of XML is that XML can store additional information and JSON can store only data. And also uh, in the world of SQL Server, uh, XML is natively supported by XML data type. So you have also indexes, XML indexes, but <coughs> JSON is uh, represented and saved and used, of course, by an Envarcher data type. So maybe you have uh, storage problems. So you should think maybe to compress it or something. And also the problem is with indexing. So you have maybe some performance problems if you want to search, I don't know, uh, every record that, for example, uh, from Chicago or something like that. So in XML world, you could have an index on that and in JSON, you don't have it. But we will show some examples. So one of the main questions is uh, why even we should support JSON in SQL Server? So the answer to that is pretty simple, maybe. So like XML, JSON is a standard and it should be supported. Other vendors, of course, support it. For example, Oracle, PostgreSQL, and many, many others. And some of them, such, for example, PostgreSQL is, uh, are very serious and robust. And also in these days, many different frameworks uh, use JSON. So web services, applications, and et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so uh, how can we actually convert uh, SQL data to JSON? It's uh, pretty much like creating XML data in SQL Server. You know that you have uh, four XML clause and in SQL Server for JSON, you have the four JSON clause that can be used in the select statement. Uh, so the four JSON supports uh, two modes. One is uh, for JSON auto and the second is for JSON path. The first one, uh, it means that the JSON output will be formatted automatically. And the second one, the output will be formatted by the query itself. And uh, by using aliases, you can create more complex outputs like uh, nested objects. Uh, I will show it shortly in the demo. And you have additional three options to use with JSON. So the first one is uh, include null values. <clears throat> because normally, when you try to convert uh, data that have null values, the properties are ignored, so are not shown. The second option is root, and it's similar to the four XML uh, root option that you can use the root options to add a single top level element to the JSON output. And the third one is without array wrapper. And this option is for uh, format the result as a single object. And of course, uh, you, you will see shortly how it works. So as mentioned before, 
uh, because of limited data types used in uh, JSON format, SQL Server will convert data types by the rules visible in this table. And data types not supported by uh, JSON in SQL Server are geography, geometry, CLR based uh, data types. And of course, when you convert JSON to SQL, you must cast the data. Okay. So let's jump with the first demo for today. So actually, I will try to select gin tonic as a drink for JSON Auto. So I want actually that SQL Server converts this automatically. And in this case, we will get an error because uh, actually for JSON Auto requires a table. So you must always have a table for this. So let's use the, this database demo and try to convert uh, all customers in JSON format. And we will, of course, get an error. And the problem is that the sales customer table contains geography uh, CLR object, and this is not supported by conversion. So maybe you are thinking that this will work in XML. And if we run this demo, we will see that also the CLR object is not supported also uh, when converting to XML. Okay, so let's use uh, some some columns not uh, that we want to convert to JSON Auto. And if we run this, we will get another issue or error because uh, see this column get date, it doesn't have a name of course and every column must have a name because it's impossible to create a json document if you don't know the name of this uh, item so now <coughs> i will finally try to get a good example so i run this code i will uh, paste it here so you can see it better here so this is a JSON array. We have five records here, and these are the first uh, five customers of uh, sales customer table. And of course, notice here that the special characters are escaped, of course, and the date type is converted to a string. <laughs> and you know that it is a string because it's surrounded by double quotation marks, of course. Uh, let's see, okay, tabular is pretty simple. You will see the table uh, down there. So these are the, the data we are talking about. But so let's jump and see what will happen if we try to get an XML of this. I will also paste this here in the second document. I can format it if you like. And uh, I was telling you actually that uh, JSON format is smaller. So j data in JSON format are smaller by size than XML. And in some cases it's not true. So here we have uh, 1,499 characters. And in XML we have only 1,067 characters. But personally, myself, maybe, uh, is not the case at your site. I really don't like this format of XML document. For me, it's uh, really hard to uh, read it. So actually, I like more to include these elements uh, when creating XML format. So actually, this kind of uh, XML for me is more readable and better. So when we check now, we will actually see that uh, it's larger than JSON document. But OK, it's possible uh, everything. And in most cases, JSON is smaller than XML. OK, uh, now we will show the for XML path option. So the thing about this is that actually the table is not required anymore. So you, you can use for JSON path to get JSON object if you, for example, don't have a table. 
course. And one more thing, you can create uh, more complex uh, JSON documents. So let's run this. Notice here that I was using aliases and the two items here are here. The first part has contract, then uh, full stop, and then phone and then fax. And let's copy this to our uh, format. And now you will actually see that uh, by using aliases, we can create more complex uh, JSON documents. So we have here the contract and we have two sub items. So phone and fax for every record. So this is a nice way to create this. Of course, uh, there are some limitations. So for example, if you think that this code will work, I can tell you that it will not. So it's actually required then all sub object items are uh, together. So if we, for example, change, uh, sorry, this script in this way, we will get a result. And this is uh, actually one limitation of this. Uh, so, uh, okay. We have the three additional options, as you remember. So let's check one by one of these. So first, this is a document, JSON document that have some null values. I forced actually null values uh, for some uh, things in this document. So let me show you here how it looks. So if you look closely at the document, you will see that the website URL is not contained in the row customer ID 2 and of course 5 because the value was null. And when using normally JSON, auto, uh, the null values are completely ignored. So the property, call property is ignored. And if we don't want to get such a result, we can use this option, include new values. And right now, if you go to the here, you will see actually that the website URL is present on every record, but in some records is actually null. So if you really need to include the null, you can use these include null values. The second uh, option is uh, to add a root node. So actually it's simple, JSON path and then a root and the name of the root. And let's check uh, this also. In. So now I have here an object. I have customer that is an actually array of five customers. So this was specified in the root part. Okay. And uh, let's uh, now see the third options. The third options is to use without array wrapper. So let's return here. I will undo something and notice here that actually I have here the beginning and the end of the array wrapper. But when I will run this code here, let's see what's the result. Let's format it. And actually, I don't have uh, the array element. I have only one element. Uh, maybe it will be more, more intuitive if I select, uh, for example, more than one object. So let's say tool customers. And you will see actually that I have two customers and uh, without error wrapper is missing. So maybe now you are thinking, thinking, okay, I will use the, remember the root element and I will combine this with the without error wrapper and it will be awesome, okay. So for example, I will try to run this code. So I'm using for JSON path, the without array wrapper, and I want to tell that actually the root is uh, called customers. But when I run this, 
I will get an error because this is not supported. So you, you cannot actually use the root together with the without array wrapper. And this is all about the first demo. Let's uh, try to come back to the slides. So uh, second things. Now, how can we actually convert JSON object to SQL to tabular data? For that, we can use the open JSON syntax and it actually returns an object that can be used just like a normal table or view and depending on on the usage it can return data in two possible ways ways so the first way of using this is uh, with the default schema and the second is with the explicit schema so the first way meaning uh, the schema of course is not specified and the second meaning that it is a user defined schema and the columns are specified by the user itself uh, it's similar to xml of course so when using open json with the default schema uh, the result uh, returns a table with three columns so key value and type the key is the name of the json property or the index of the json element the value is the value of the property or the index defined by the key column and the third column returned is type and it is the json data type of the value and uh, you can see in this table on the bottom of the screen uh, what are the values? So if the type is zero, this means that the value is now. For example, for one, meaning that is string and et cetera, et cetera. So demos. Usually my presentation has a lot of demos. So let's try this. I have a JSON document. Uh, notice for example I, I will try actually to paste and if you can see my visual studio code tell me oh there is an error of course because maybe if you take a look here you will see that this is not closed so actually it's a wrong json document so it's not okay and when i try to convert it, I will get actually an error and it says JSON text is not pro properly formatted and there is an expected character J at found at position 11. So this is pretty, pretty near the actual problem because this is, uh, if we put all in uh, one row, we, we should see actually that this is the 10 or 11 character and here somewhere you have an error and actually if you dig inside you can find where the problem is okay let's see with a good example of course so the result of the json auto is a table with three columns so key value and type and maybe <coughs> you don't want to learn these types and know what is a, what is what so I actually created a help function that will help me here in this demo. And let's run it again. So actually John Doe, that has a key of name. It's a string, also blog URL is a string. So the born is the year when I was born. And it is int, of course, null value is zero, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But also we can play a little bit with this. So notice here that I was using this for open JSON and only the variable. And in this case, I also can use the optional parameter to get some parts of this document. So first, let me get only the parents node. I will run this, of course. And now I get uh, just this here. 
So these are also the free column value, like key value and type. And now I have actually this small JSON document here, uh, details, because I told here to the SQL engine that I want to retrieve only parent node. Uh, what will happen uh, if I try to retrieve the missing friend node? Uh, of course, I will get nothing. I will get an empty table because, uh, okay, it's, don't don't think that I don't have friends, but in this example, <laughs> I don't have them uh, in uh, JSON document. So when we are using this uh, relaxed mode, uh, we will get an empty result set. But uh, ex the other way is that the we want to get some data that are not more relaxed, and this is called strict. So actually, I am forcing SQL to get me the friends node, and I am telling him this document should have friends because I have friends, okay? And if we run this example, we'll get an exception. So with forcing this strict verb, uh, we can actually force the checking if the there is a corresponding node that we want to retrieve. Okay. Uh, selecting the favorite readings node only. And uh, notice here actually that the favorite drinks is an object actually. So it's not an array like, for example, parents, but it is an object and it is actually returned like an object. So this requires additional uh, casting. Okay. Uh, so let's see, for example, I can have here for favorite drinks, as you see, and I want to retrieve these favorite drinks, and I missed here one thing. So actually, the path is wrong because, uh, of course, I'm missing quotes here. So if I want to retrieve <coughs> something that uh, the node name has uh, favorite drinks, I must close it by double quotation marks. And now I will retrieve this favorite drinks node. Okay, uh, let's return to the demo one more time. So the second option to use this open JSON is uh, with explicit schema and it's similar while well, like reading XML data in SQL Server, and you can actually specify your own schema when reading JSON data. In this case, the function will also return a table, but the output columns and their data type can be specified by the user itself. The schema for the JSON data can be specified using the optional with keyword at the end of the open JSON function. And of course, uh, this with keyword is well known to when uh, from the XML documents reading. Okay, uh, a little more demo. So now, notice here we have the same document like before, but now the difference is here. So select star from open JSON. I pass the one variable. Uh, here, the JSON document, and then I'm using this optional with keyword, and I am here specifying every property here. So I have a property, this will be the column name, name, like here, this part of the document. Blog URL will be called blog URL column, and it will be read from here. Okay, let's run it. Now we, we don't have any more free columns only. We have as much columns as we like. And of course, uh, we get here the result that's nice for parsing or something. Uh, as you can see here, uh, these favorite drinks and parents are complex, uh, actually, data types. And I was using here as JSON. At the end of this, 
So I actually get the result here of that. But in the second example, notice that I didn't use this as JSON at the end here. And when you run this, you will get null. So if you actually know that this is a complex, uh, this property is a complex object, you must specify this as JSON. Otherwise, it will be ignored and it will be null. OK, let's see what's wrong here. So we have an error and the error is <coughs> what 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 is the error so notice here that uh, i was using varchar data type like as json and remember from the intro of this uh, presentation json must be used and saved as n varchar data type so a sql server cannot parse this because json requires uh, n varchar data type OK, uh, we can play a little bit more. So we have the same document here, Jason, and I am selecting his favorite drinks here, like as Jason, and then I am uh, using the cross apply. You know, this is something like uh, join, as you know, and I am passing to the join this variable, favorite drinks or column. And I want to uh, read JSON values from that, what I will get here. So for every record, like John Doe, I get uh, the name and uh, drink how much somebody, John Doe likes to drink these drinks. So with using cross apply, you can actually read uh, details of the document. OK, um, we have uh, one or two slides on the demo. So uh, JSON value. JSON value is one of the two functions with a purpose to extract value from a JSON text. Uh, the second one is JSON query. A JSON value used to extract only primitive data types. So only null, null strings, number, or Boolean values can be extracted with that. And one important limitation of the JSON value function in SQL Server 2016, when actually the JSON support was introduced, introduced, introduced sorry, is that the variable and the second argument is not allowed. And from SQL Server 2017, you can use the variable for the second argument of that. So if the extracted value is longer than 4,000 characters, the function will return null or exception. And in lax mode, it will return null, and in strict mode, it will return error. So recap. JSON value can extract only primitive data types. And you have only also the JSON query. And JSON query is used to extract a JSON fragment or to get a complex value type. So only arrays or ob objects can be ex you, uh, extracted with JSON query. So the function return a JSON fragment of type nvarchar4000. And of course, if uh, also you can use it in lax or strict mode. And when used in lax mode, uh, it will return null. And in strict mode, it will return error if something doesn't match. OK, demos, demos, demos. So JSON value, we have this uh, the same document like before, and I'm trying to extract by using this function JSON value. I'm passing the same variable every time, and I want to uh, extract uh, all the fields here. I will run this. And 
Okay, let's analyze it a little bit. So first thing that it's strange is that non-existing node, it's not existing here. So I get now for this non-existing node. And the second thing I have here, the parents node, and I wanted to extract the parents node, and I also get null. Why? Because with JSON value, you can extract only primitive data types. So only strings, numbers, null values, and so. Okay. Uh, but what will happen if we try to use the, to select the non-existing node, but this time with the strict option, and it will happen, of course, that we will get an exception because the strict you the strict uh, verb tells to the engine this property is required okay so let's say we have a really large json property and more than 4000 characters uh, maybe you remember that before i told you that uh, the result is uh, object of uh, 4,000 characters, okay? And when using this in a relaxed mode, we will get null. But when we we are using the same thing in the strict with the strict verb, we will get an exception. So this is the problem. Okay, and now the JSON query. So remember I told you that JSON query is only for extracting complex data types. Let's try to extract some values here out. And notice here that the name is here. It has a value, but it's written like null. Also born after Woodstock, whatever. It's not extract and uh, only the favorite cor colors are, is extract out because with the JSON query, you can only extract complex data types. So arrays and objects, of course. And also we can play with the strict thing. So if, for example, we are using strict to extract these JSON query values, we will get a lot of exceptions because uh, some of them are not simple data types and some of them are not existing. Okay. Um, are you alive? Hopefully. Uh, modifying the JSON data. So ca uh, how can we modify JSON data? Uh, we are using the function JSON modify, and it actually allows us many things. And uh, we can, with this one comment, we can up update the value of an existing property. We can add a new element to an existing array. We can insert a new property and even the value of the new property. And we can delete a property based on the combination of modes and provided values. And important, uh, if you want to achieve multiple changes at once, it's impossible. So it requires multiple calls. It's similar to if you remember the SQL Server replace. So you have the replace, 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 replace. And in every replace, you are replacing, for example, one word or one character, of course. So let's see. JSON modify. It will be funny. So. I have the small JSON document with only two items, name and blog URL, and I want to add a new property currently presenting. I'm, I will run this, and now you see I have name, I have the blog URL like before, but now I have the currently presenting. And what's the issue here? I don't want that currently presenting one. What, what does one mean? It's a number. Okay, it can be five, for example, and it doesn't mean nothing, but actually SQL Server did what I told him to do. So I was passing him one, it's a number. So usually when you don't specify the data type, 
it is an int data type. So one is meaning int, it's int. I can also five 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 right here and it will be all okay. Of course I will get the five five five. But if I want to get the Boolean value, and this was my original, my intention, I am forced to cast this value as a bit. So now the result is not anymore one or five five five. Now I have the currently presenting true. So you must be aware that you must cast actually uh, the values to the data type you want to get. Okay, of course, like before, you can use the strict word. You can use it everywhere. But what will happen if we try to add a new node with currently presenting by using strict? Let's run it. And uh, we will get an error. So if you specify strict in this way, it is actually required that this item or property already exists. So you cannot use the strict when you uh, want, for example, to append something to the document. Okay, one more thing <laughs> important. Notice here that I have here an array. This is a legal array as you can see. So I have two elements. I have the new uh, SQL Server functions. The second element is SQL and JSON. And I want actually, these are my meetups, meetup list. And I want to happen to this small JSON document, another node with an array, of course. I will try this. And okay, the result is here. But as you can see here, I will uh, go back here, format. So what is this? This is not an array, this is a string. So SQL Server managed to escape special characters all the way. And this is one big string. So this is not an array. <clears throat> and this is what I didn't want to get my intention originally was to get an array. If you want to create an array, then you must use the JSON query because JSON query, remember, is for complex data types. So I will pass the same value here. I will tell to the SQL engine that this is a new property and I will use the JSON query. And now the result is pretty good. So I have actually a real array here with two elements inside, and this is nice. How can we remove the JSON property? Of course, by using null. So I have here name, blog, URL, favorite drinks, and I want to remove favorite drinks. So I am using JSON modify the variable and the new value will be null. So, sorry, when I run this demo, Notice here that the uh, result don't have favorite strings anymore. Okay, uh, second example, I have two meetups here and I want to remove only the first meetup. So let's run it and see what comes out. So actually it wasn't removed totally, but the value was set to null. So now in the result, I have two items and the first one is null. If I want to completely remove this item, uh, it can be achieved only by passing the new completely value of this. So I started with this new SQL Server functions and SQL Server in JSON, and I am using the JSON query and meetups, blah, blah, blah. And when I run this, I will get the meetup, only meet, one meetup in the meetup list, and I don't have the null like before. Okay, let's uh, replace something. I have meetups and I want to replace the first uh, item with a uh, new value. And when I do this, 
uh, I will get the result I wanted. So the new SQL Server functions is replaced with something about new SQL Server functions, and you can see the result here. Okay. Uh, but imagine that I want to replace uh, first element of the non-existing lectures note. So notice this document do, don't have lectures. And what will happen? Da -da -da. Nothing, <laughs> of course. So SQL Server take, the, take this document and said, okay, but you cannot replace it because it doesn't exist. But we have also the append option. So now I will try to add a new meetup on meetups here. I will append a new element and this is possible. So now my meetups has three values and we started only with two values. But let's try remember this example here. So I was trying to change the first of a non existing lectures mode. But now I will try to append the lectures with some value. And ta -da -da -da, I have here the lectures item and I have one item here. So with the actually with append, you can add new uh, nodes, elements, etc. Okay. Uh, strict, remember strict, of course, we want to change the first item of the non-existing lectures uh, node with something, something, something. If you run this, of course, it's impossible because it doesn't exist. Okay. Uh, and now we have favorite drinks is here. We are using strict and we try to replace it with null. Okay. Just a second. Let me run without the strict here because I showed you this demo. And notice here that favorite drinks, it's not containing here. So it doesn't exist because I actually deleted him with the null. Okay, <clears throat> go back. Now, the same example with strict, run it. And here we go. So we have the favorite drinks insight, but now it's not missing completely but we have now. And the uh, last example is uh, multiple changes required, of course, multiple calls. So it's like this stuff here, replace, 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 or whatever. So JSON modify, JSON modify, and so on. So actually I want to add, add two changes here. The first one is to, I want to add a meetup list and I want to remove favorite drinks. So the result here has a new node called meetups and doesn't have any more favorite drinks. Okay, uh, slides. So what is, is JSON? It's JSON or not JSON. Huh? It is a function actually that checks if the input string is a valid JSON data and it can return a value with three states, one for yes, zero for no, and no for null. And uh, each JSON does not check the uniqueness of keys at the same level. So notice this uh, example on the right side of the screen. This is, uh, if you ask SQL Server and this JSON function, it is a valid JSON document. And some uh, tips and tricks. So let's see what we can do, by, for example, about importing JSON from a file. Uh, what can we do to improve performance by indexing JSON data? And I will show you two or three nice examples at the end. Let's go to the demo. Okay, is JSON. Let's run this piece of code. So the first one is null, so the result is null. This here is not a valid JSON document, so the result is zero. And the third one 
is a pretty de decent JSON document and the result is one. But this one, I have two time name John Doe and I will check this. It is valid. Yes, SQL Server told me that it is valid, but uh, I don't know if we should believe him. Ju judge by yourself. Okay. Uh, imagine, for example, that uh, you want to store some uh, configuration JSON documents in database. And I'm creating a sample database here. So test user settings is the table. I have some key, for example, and I have app settings. And it can be null, of course, as you can see here, but also you could force it that is required, for example, but it doesn't matter. And I <laughs> created a constraint check here that the is JSON is required to be one. Let's uh, run this code and let's try to insert uh, three items. And I have some errors here. Why is that? Because first time I inserted null and this is OK because it can be null. The second one wa was not a correct uh, JSON document, so we get an error for this. And the third one was OK, so the settings are OK. It's a valid JSON document. And now when selecting this uh, table, you can see that we have only two records, the null one, which is OK, and the second one that is a valid JSON document. Uh, on my hard drive, I have in CTEMP uh, one JSON file, and this is just a quick, quick introduction that you can actually read directly JSON documents from a hard drive. And it's really nice when you have a large uh, import, so something like that, from data files from your hard drive. Okay, and now let's see something about performance. Okay, let's create some test data. Now let's turn on statistics. And now let's see. I have normal JSON documents here. I want to find every customer that the postal city name is Idaho City. And let's run this query. I have one customer. Let's look at the execution plan. You can see that uh, we have an index scan. So actually the whole table is scanned. And this is not performing really well. We have, it's a small table, so we have only 75 logical reads. And we took about 16 milliseconds. So what can we do to improve performances? First, we can add a uh, alter table and add a uh, computed column. And secondly, we can create an index on this computed column. And now when we did this, let's repeat the same select. Now, if you look at the execution plan, you will see, oh, we have an index scan and a key lookup. And now this query is performing pretty nice. So we have only seven logical reads and we used zero CPU time. Okay, let's say it. it's a small data set. <clears throat> let's drop it, all drop. The second uh, way of improving some performances is for example, by creating full text catalog. But uh, <clears throat> it's not so easy actually. It's performing astronomically well. So, you see that we are using the full text match here. And if you look at messages, we have uh, only two logical reads. We have also CPU time zero. But uh, sometimes uh, maybe you will have some problems because uh, you must exactly know the way how you will retrieve data in this way. And also is, for example, OK, because you can, for example, use these contains and all in the whole JSON document, you can find something that is quit hitting. OK. OK, 
And this is the highlight of this presentation almost. So you know, for example, uh, sys databases. Okay, let's select start from sys databases. You have 86 columns here. So let me scroll, you see only 86 columns. And your boss come to you and tell you, hey, Damir or John, please, I want to know what uh, values are different in the master and in the model database. But I only want to know what are the differences. I don't want to get 86 columns. I want to get only the columns that are different. So actually by running this query here, ta-da. So this is the highlight of the JSON demo for me because in really easy way to get uh, distinct values for uh, by column, column by column in two rows. So only these nine here, values are different. All the other uh, 79 are the same. Okay, you can play a little bit also with JSON. For example, if you have a comma separated uh, list of values, <coughs> you can actually add the be beginning and the end of the array and you can retrieve these uh, values. But uh, it's not every time usable because maybe here notice that we have an error. So one element is missing here at the end. And of course, uh, JSON is uh, so a little bit skeptical about this. Of course, uh, I will not run this part of query, but for example, imagine that you are creating a table column and in this column, you, your plan is to store a JSON value and then uh, you can actually uh, with check constraint force the system that actually the JSON document is required to have the favorite colors note. Okay, <laughs> and the last demo for today is this. Uh, JSON is pretty handsome for hashing. So let's run this code. Take a look at the result. So actually this column here is first uh, 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 the whole row is converted to JSON, okay, and then it's hashed by using hash bytes function. And now imagine that you have two systems and that you want fastly compare row by row and know what are the differences. So you have uh, one system and the other, and you want to maintain data that actually the new records are inserted and the change records are uh, changed on the second system. And <clears throat> you can easily and really fast performing use the hash value of the JSON document. And uh, with these hash values, uh, it's easy to you to compare if the values are changed. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, this is all about my demo today. Uh, here are my contact details. Uh, one more time, thank you very much for having me as a speaker. And uh, that's all, folks. Great session, Dami. To be honest with you, especially when it comes to um, change data capture, right? where you use the hash. I really like uh, your demos. Um, if you guys have any question, feel free to raise your hand and then we're gonna and ask your question. Yes, Yitzhak, can you unmute yourself? Hey, Damir. <laughs> Thanks for the session. Uh, I have a question. Uh, yesterday on a Microsoft SQL Server forum, uh, it was an interesting question. A person has a seven plus gigs of JSON file. 
and okay. the person is trying to load it into a SQL server. So, uh, <laughs> what's your take on it on that approach? Basically, it was no answer. Different Microsoft folks tried to answer, but we were pushing that person to some other APIs, not in the SQL server. Yes, it's a really hard question to answer this here, but you you must see because, for example, <coughs> I didn't have, for example, examples that a JSON document was more than I don't know 500 megabytes. So it really depends, but uh, the size that you mentioned is pretty nice size and. Uh, Re really, it's. Uh, I think that um, actually, if you have enough power and whatever, uh, that you, you can parse this, but uh, it's. Uh, I think it's on the edge because it could take also a lot of time, for example, and something like that. So, uh, actually, it can be tried, but uh, I really don't know what system you must have that because I suppose that this all stuff is is done in uh, memory when using this JSON. And uh, so I think that you really require a lot of memory and maybe also CPU power for this stuff. <laughs> 